Hey there from Bug Eye Guy. Today we're gonna to do another installment in sort of our video owner's manual and I wanna to talk to you about weather protection. It's November here in Connecticut, gorgeous fall weather, but a little too cold, about 45. We need the top today, so I'm gonna take this car out. I thought I'd put the top on with you watching. So a lot of people ask us, how do you make this weather gear work? It's obviously all designed in the perhaps early 50s and that's 1950s and uh, it's not very effective, but it does help and you do the best you can with it. But there are things you can do to make it work better than if you use it incorrectly. And I'll show you some of that in this video. So first step is we wanna get the tonneau off. Now this is a long tonneau. You've seen us talk before about short tonneaus that fasten here. This is the long tonneau and it uses all the same fittings as the top and these are 10X fittings which are these pistons. I had someone recently ask how to open these. It's a mushroom that you pull up the top. There's a little spring in there, and that's a 10 ax, a 10 ax fitting. So it also is supposed to have these bars that hook on here. I know we're gonna talk about tops, but we might as well talk a little about this. These will come uncut because the manufacturers all wanna give you a little wiggle room for installing them. You don't wanna cut this too wide so that this bar can fall out. This little bar is essential for holding the tonneau on the car. But anyway, this is a, a gorgeous Everflex tonneau and it's the best one to get. And that's the one that we sell in our catalog. The Bug Eye Guy parts, parts catalog has this stuff if you wanna upgrade any of your gear or for, for the spring, have a new tonneau. So, so we'll put this one away for the season and then we'll move on to the top. And the most important thing, well, there are a lot of important things. One really important ingredient is this bow. And if you look in here, um, I don't know if you can get in here to see, but this is the way that the factory mounted these little brackets. And it's kind of cool. You don't see this very often. There's a little square receptacle here for this top bow. And the factory mount was actually piercing a hole through this Hardora mat. Remember on the original cars that came with this Hardora in the back, the carpet would be non-stock. It would have had a rubber mat here, but those rubber mats are really, really difficult to execute. Nobody's come up with a reproduction. So carpets become the standard, but this was the original. This was the original inst installation. And this had a rubber bumper. Well, this snap was original, but there was a little rubber bumper. You might find the hole in your car, probably right about there. This little rubber buffer, which we also have in our catalog, but um, that was meant to go there so that it would stop it from, you know, it would sort of brace the piece like that. There was also a strap that went through this flange right here. And that strap held the top and the bows secure. So you would see the hood, if you will, in the UK, for you frog eye owners, you would see the hood rolled up here in a Concours Correct car. Practically speaking, that's kind of a lot of work to pack. So most people will just fold up their top, throw it in the back, and we made these bags to go one step further because it's the easiest way, you know, in the, when you're not using it, you throw it in the boot. When you need it, you pull it out and it stays protected. We'll talk about that a little more in a second, but. So to get this out of here, you wanna pull this out. And by the way, in most of these cars, it's kind of too painful to pierce and put this hole in. So you'll see these brackets, these little metal receptacles, you'll see them mounted on the outside of most of these bulkhead coverings on most cars. But anyway, this is my car, Cole, which is a beautiful restoration and it happens to have it done correctly. So we'll take advantage of that. So to remove this thing, this, this baby right here is like the worst, <laughs> the worst design, horrible idea, you know? I mean, even all these automated modern tops that have motors and gizmos, they're, they're all those moving parts, but they won't destroy your car the way this thing will. So this you wanna handle with extreme care because the opportunity <laughs> to destroy the back deck, scratch the windshield, 
write your name on the hood. I mean, this little baby right here has zero protection, so it's sort of a deadly weapon. Uh, but we deal with them every day, so um, it's something that just kind of built into these cars. But so what you generally want to do to get these out is you have to watch out that you don't gouge these up and that you don't scratch the doors. I mean, it's like 101 different ways. Stay away from this thing. You'll destroy your car. Now, if you do it right, it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be that big a deal, but you're trying to sort of angle it. I, I like to angle it around 45 degrees and then I can lift it out very carefully without like operation, that old game where you hit the, the edges, you know, this thing is to be treated with care. So it's stowed facing aft. And when you need it, again, holding it away, you need to be tall for this job so that's away from the car. Uh, it goes in this socket, and again at an angle so that I don't destroy these, because these are always all scratched up. We spend hours polishing these because they get destroyed from this top bow. Okay, <laughs> we're safe. It's, it's in its receptacle now. And that's the goal, is to get it from there to here, without hitting anything. And if you can do that, you're a hero in my book. This thing also has the spring. So right here, there's a spring mechanism and there's a little detent. And so now it's in the detent. Here it's out of the detent. It's important that that's working on your car because that's integral to making tension on your top when you're all done. So when you're putting the top or the hood on the frame, you want these in the down position. Again, you know, remember this is an $1,800 car, probably one of the motors on a modern BMW convertible costs $1,800 just to operate the back hatch. So this is super crude, but it does work and you just wanna treat it well. So now that we have this in position and retracted, we're ready for this baby. And we keep these in the bag mainly, that's a fleece line bag, because what happens is these things just get destroyed sliding around. One more part of the theme, the, the rear window on this, which, you know, on most cars now are glass. This is what's so vulnerable, they get scratched. And if you just ball this up and throw it in the boot, when you go to take it out, you're screwed. So what we do is we, we put it in the bag with the padding and I'll also, be even more meticulous and put a bath mat or a towel on the window so that when I fold in these quarter lights, which also get scratched, I don't end up grinding the daylights out of my clear window because I'm gonna be looking through that all winter long. So the first step for me, the way I do this, is I'll take the bar. Now this is another, it's worth noting, a lot of these tops are missing the bars and they get torn like this. Now, I didn't build this car, I was, it's a great car, but it came to me like this. And it's possible somebody installed it without the bar. It's also possible they just hooked it incorrectly and tore the fabric. No huge deal, we could certainly fix that. But the key thing is that this bar engages under these hooks. Some of the cars have these missing, some of them have them in the wrong place. We have a template so that you can get these exactly where they need to be. But it hooks like so on both sides and you start there, you're trying to center the hood on the body um, or the top as we call it. And then these 10X fittings go on and there's this, I'll show you on your side so you can see what I just did. These are the 10X pistons again. They have these little springs. So they go, I'm going to have to pull it over just a tad like that and they go on these fittings. And incidentally, these fit one more thing, so easy, anyone can do it. These loosen up. I'm just sort of making fun of the complexity. These loosen up. These wear out. They get all floppy. These, these are supposed to be riveted, but they're often screwed on. And oftentimes the screws will be loose, the fitting will be loose. We sell all these fittings new in our catalog, of course. But this is a tricky one because you have to remove the panel on the back side to tighten it. It's hard to get to this. So a lot of these are loose. So that's something you want to be looking for. And now if you're still, if you haven't frozen to death, we're getting closer to putting up the top. Nice to do this inside. 
And now comes the next, <laughs> the next place that's often done wrong. So there's a bar inside here. And um, incidentally, we sell this bar set. And I've joked about it in the past, but on my original Bug Eye Gumby in, in the 70s, I didn't have this bar. I didn't even know about it. And when I hit 30 miles an hour, I go boop and pop open, which <laughs> didn't work very well when the rain or snow came in. So you need this bar and the bar engages in this slot right where my fingertips are. And you gotta get that right, otherwise the, the front of the top is not gonna stay put. So the way that I'll do this is I'll put these snaps on. These are lift dot fittings. And they go on these two studs as you're seeing there in the camera. There's one on each side. And this is the later style bar type top and the early cars up to a roughly car 5,000 had a set of studs across the front here, a lot like a TR3. And this setup with the bar is actually much more positive. The studs, there were nine of them, and you could get weather going between the studs. So this setup is the modern, quote unquote, modern style, and, uh, or more modern style for Mark I sprites, and all the Mark IIs had this. And this bar engages in this slot, and now you can see you won't get air blowing up through there. You get both of these on, and now the front of the top is properly secured on the windshield, and you won't get water or air going up through there. So this is what it looks like. Three fasteners on each side, two in the front, two hooks. One more thing is the bow here on this top is about in line with this seam. Many, many times these bows are bent fore or aft, and sometimes you even have to bend them a little to get it to look right. But the quality of the tops, unfortunately, is not as good as it once was. The top that we sell tends to fit quite well. It's a little bit more expensive, but most of these have shrunken as they age and they lose their suppleness as they age, and they are too stiff when they're made, and the pattern is too small. So to try to put a top on, especially if it's cold or if you're at all arthritic, very, very difficult. We've tried to repair that by selling a premium top that's made out of great material. This is called Everflex, and that's the one that you want, even if it costs you a little more you will get to use it and install it on the side of the road with a lot less effort. Okay, so now we have this roughly installed and I'm now on to the next step, which if you can see under here, I'm pulling from one side, but it's, it's not really designed to be pulled from one side. You kind of have to pull from the center and it might require a couple of laps or I have to push from underneath to try to get this to go over center. And <laughs> anyone can do it, you see, it's so easy. But um, some of this is because we have a good fitting top. It's a little tighter, but that's okay. We made it. And now, now that you can look at the top for a second, and this one's been for a while, you can see it's worn in. So it's not a brand new top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the, the little detents here so that the bow can slide upward. And what that effectively does is it puts tension. I'm even gonna to have to hit it to get this to slide up a little. But now if you look from the outside, you've got something resembling a drum tight top. And this actually happens to be one of the more beautiful tops of any of the cars in the building. It's almost sort of molded to the frame and it's nice and taut. If you go to a car show and you see British cars with their tops on, it's, it's like a lot of bad haircuts. It's, it's pretty difficult to, to stomach. Now, all it does is it takes you 20 minutes to do it and requires uh, <laughs> An awful lot of fiddling, but now we're good for the rest of the season. So that's the top on. Next step is the side curtains. And same idea. 
These are really easy to damage and scratch. In fact, we've got a warehouse full of these in damaged condition. This is the, I'll probably just put the driver's side on for you for this video. So we'll get that one out of here. And this similarly is a padded wallet. We call it a side curtain wallet. And we have these in our catalog as well. Because when you go to take these out, you want to be most likely to find clear windows. And honestly, I've driven before with really scratch ones in the rain at night, and you don't want to do that. It's really dangerous because the, the headlights get prism, prismified, if that's a word, the, you've got a prism, and you can't see through it, and it's kind of dangerous. So clear windows are really great, and these pouches will help. There's another thing that we've uh, started doing lately, which is using these, these rubber washers here because this trim piece gets so badly damaged from these brackets, because you have metal on metal. Again, this wasn't, nobody thought in 1958 when they started selling these that anybody would care about these kinds of cosmetic and restoration kinds of issues. But now that we polish and put so much effort into these trim strips, it's nice to protect them. So with these, you're trying to they don't always line up, and we'll see if we can get this one. There it is. You're trying to basically get these loose enough so that you can get them to slide aft and lock into place. And then sometimes if you wiggle them, you can get them tighter. But the idea being that you want to get these, they don't have to be super secure. You don't need to tighten these with a screwdriver. This can't come off now. And it's once the doors close, it's locked in place but you just need it to be snug enough that it won't fall off when you open the door. Again, damaging the car. That's the theme. There's so many different ways to damage the car, but if you do it right, it all works well. And then that's it, all done. And then there's a, a, a block here to close it from the inside or the outside. There should be one here on the outside, one here on the inside. Mm, I'd have to look it up. There may be we're supposed to be one on this, right on the back of this, and this one is here. Not really sure which is correct, but it doesn't really matter because it works fine. This allows the person to open it from the inside. You're looking for a reasonably good fit here. Here's where the kind of, there's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of flexibility in terms of weather protection, but um, believe it or not, this makes a pretty nice, toasty little nest and that's where I'm off what I'm off to enjoy in this wonderful five-speed 100 horsepower bug eye called Cole now ready for the winter thanks for watching from bug eye guy